Hello everybody, Josh12 back again with another video. I'm here with another Dragon Ball Super review. I'm here to review Dragon Ball Super episode 87 titled Hunt the Poachers, Goku and number 17's United Front. Of course, if you've not seen the latest episode of Dragon Ball Super, please check it out because this review may contain spoilers. But that being said, let's get into the episode. Now, Dragon Ball Super's episode 87 is pretty straightforward to the point. It's kind of almost quasi their second-ish filler episode of the saga if you include the brawl episode which does have some form of development which is the recruitment of vegeta and of course the birth of brawl but whatever it is what it is this episode is pretty much just the bad people came over took the animals and now goku and 17 have to stop the bad people and get the animals back that's kind of just the basic plot of the episode there's not really anything extravagant happening and that's pretty much it Goku and 17 team up to stop them and that's the extent of this episode however there has been a lot of very interesting things that came out of this episode that really has my mind really fucked and as fucked as it, as it is already from the shitty night of Saturday that I've had and not to mention the countless shit that's been on YouTube lately fucking wink wink my head's pretty fucked already, but we'll get into that. Apparently, there's kind of like a Mexican standoff, no offense, but it kind of is, where 17 and Goku kind of make make it make it a good way of just defeating all the bad guys. They take out the poachers pretty easily, which is expected. 17 and Goku are pretty strong characters, but they come to the big boss, the, the, the captain of the ship, who has come to the island to take away the Minotaur character, which was established in the previous episode, and they want to get it back, of course, and protect the animals and what have you. Protect the animals! You gotta protect them, it's a very important message they're trying to get across in these last couple episodes, which I think are very interesting. But when I say there's a Mexican standoff or some form of standoff, the captain of the ship, the po the main poacher, pulls out like some form of remote control and he states that this control controls the ship and if he presses the button, he will self-destruct himself in the ship, which of course the animals will all die and it will kind of just defeat the purpose of protecting them in the first place and uh, you know you don't want to see the animals die that's kind of the main point and there's a chain of events that happen that is pretty much just this is fucked up what are you doing kind of moments that lead into the rest of the episode and i'll talk about that right now because it's just it's too much first okay the guy's gonna blow up the ship he's a bad guy he's a little asshole fuck it but here's the thing you have super speed, which means you can take away the fucking control out of his hand before he even presses it. That pisses me off as is, so I don't know why it was a big debacle. However, whatever. He's a bad guy, he's a douchebag, asshole prick. He's gonna blow up the fucking ship and kill all the animals with him. He's an asshole. But the thing that really gets to me is that there's a chain of events that are really fucked up. First, Seventeen decides to take it upon himself, spoilers, to commit suicide. He's gonna take on he's gonna take the guy out of the ship and just freeze the death in I guess the void of space, which is absurd. And Goku being the guy he is can't let that happen. Plus, he obviously really wants him to join up the team for Universe 7 in the Tournament of Power. So, he instant transmissions himself, 17, and the main poacher to King Kai's planet to let him rot. Like, you need to fucking keep this... This It's a fast-paced episode, folks, so keep up with me. As you know, King Kai's planet has a very specific kind of ratio of gravity, which is ten times that of Earth's gravity, which means that this guy there is going to be completely incapacitated and have zero mobility over the course of the rest of his life, so to speak, as long as he has his finger on the button of that remote control. So basically, in Goku's thinking, he's gonna just let him rot there on King Kai's fucking planet, and if he, even if he does press the button, well, he'll just destroy King Kai's planet a lot like Cell, and it will just, it'll be whatever, who cares, it's just King Kai's planet. God damn it, are you fucking with me? There's levels of fucked upness here. Goku, shh. 
shit the bed because, dude, first, you're super quick. Why not take away the remote before he even has the point of destroying anything? Second, you're going to let the guy rot there, which is pretty fucked. And then thirdly, you're just going to do that to King Kai. He's your buddy, your, your master. You're going to just fuck him over twice in the same way? That's just fucked up thinking right there. And as a Goku guy who's a big fan, I, I don't know if I mentioned that enough in this fucking series of reviews I've done on my channel. Fuck, I got called out as a Goku dick sucker back in the screw attack days. So, fuck me running. But, you know what? It is what it is. I have at least some gall to, like, call out Goku as a character for doing stupid shit that, I, that really bugs me. And he does that here. But, of course, as the episode goes on, we find out later through Dende, the poacher was lying about having the ability to destroy the ship via remote control. It was a lie. So, of course, they take away the control from the poacher, the animals are saved and, and returned back into the wild of the island reserve that Seventeen was purposely protecting, and it's pretty much just a save day. Jocko Galacta Patrolman t makes another reprise in the super anime. I know a lot of people are, have been wondering, like, where's Jocko been? Like, what's up with him? We got the scene again in this episode, which was kind of cool. I always enjoy Jocko and it was kind of funny to see him take the credit of arresting the poachers and boy was it an interesting conversation later to have between Goku and Seventeen. Uh, over the course of the episode, there's a specific line that becomes full circle in the episode, which is the Super Dragon Balls. In the beginning of the episode, Seventeen and Goku have a conversation about the Super Dragon Balls. Go Seventeen doesn't want to be a part of the tournament. That was established in the previous episode. However, Seventeen is intrigued by the Super Dragon Balls. It comes for s full circle at the end of the episode where Seventeen declares he will join the tournament power and Goku's team. However, he wants a wish from the Super Dragon Balls to get a cruise ship because he, which is absurd, but whatever, it is what it is. He wants a cruise ship so he can travel the world with his family. Now, before all the shippers and all the fucking women and, you know, all the other people and fans get all up in arms and like, oh, that's so cute. I find it baffling. There's a lot of baffling things in this episode. Bear with me. I'm all over the place, I know. It's been a long night, as I stated previously. Seventeen could fly. Why do you... Granted, you can stretch your legs out on a cruise ship. It could be enjoyable. I know a lot of old people that do that. Hell, I know a lot of friends that like to cruise, you know, go to fucking around the world. It's like, hey, we're having our second honeymoon. We're going to road trip around Europe or whatever the fuck. Yeah, that seems enjoyable with your family, your wife, and your kids. Nice. But, dude, you have the ability of flight. I mean, like, if Gohan can teach Videl at, like, in a rudimentary term to, to fucking learn how to fly basic flight, I'm pretty sure you can teach as a stronger character. Um, I'm pretty sure you ha you can have the ability to teach your fucking wife and kids to fly, too. So you can just fly together as a family around the world, you know. Or, better not, why not do what most characters should do on this fucking series, which is mooch off the, the richer characters of the series. There's Hercule, who has a lot of money, and then there's Bomo, who has more money than to spend. She's fucking... She has stuff. Get some stuff from her that she's obviously not giving away. Go over there. But whatever. He wants a cruiser. It is what it is. It's nice. It's sweet. I get it. But it's still kind of stupid to me. However, there is something else. Two specific things I want to talk about before I end this review, which is Beerus in this episode. Uh, I forgot to mention this in the chain of events that kind of lead to holy shit, what the fuck kind of moments between Seventeen, Goku, and this poacher, but as the poacher is about to detonate the remote control, we have an animated shot of the ship actually exploding, and then it kind of cuts the commercial. Why the fuck did they show that? when that didn't happen, and was it an actual image that happened in someone's head? Because later, when we come back from break, Beerus wakes up from a nightmare or some form of dream that he recalls later as a bad omen of Goku dying. Another question I have is, will Goku die at the end of this arc? Probably won't happen, I know, but I just want to ask, is Beerus's bad omen that he that he calls it, was it a point of comedic relief just for the episode, or will this be something that is touched upon later in the arc or at some point in this series? Also, we got to see Vegeta, Boma, and Brawl again. Vegible fans ignite your flames of fucking amazing fucking uproar, and then we'll move on. But anyways, uh, overall, the episode was okay. Uh, there was another thing that kind of took me off guard that I thought was interesting that they put into this episode, which is, I guess, around the time when Seventeen agrees to be a part of the Tournament of Power, uh, Goku and him 
have a conversation about saviorship and being good people and stuff like that and how, hey, you know, it's kind of odd how I was supposed to be your villain and I kind of standing here teaming up with you to save the day. It's kind of cool how things work out. And it was interesting that they took this episode of all episodes to talk about this topic, which has been heavily discussed, especially because of this arc uh, between fans and people who like Goku or like to analyze Goku or specifically don't like Goku and debate about him. When Seventeen acknowledges this to Goku, Goku kind of gives, it almost like the first time ever, his basic face value opinions on him as a savior. It's almost like Toriyama came in and was like, hey, before you give me that check, can you like put this in the episode? It kind of just felt shoehorned in, in a Toriyama way. It, it almost sounded like a Toriyama interview come to life. I don't know why, it just did to me, at least from my perspective. But Goku states things like, I'm not the savior of the world, I'm not really a hero, I'm kind of just doing it, just fight strong guys. He says it, something that a lot of people have debated for years and talked about ad nauseum, especially because of this arc, and he kind of just says it to 17 off the cuff at face value, which was interesting how they reinforce that, <laughs> almost like the same people who are talking to Toriyama at Toy Animation were like, all right, guy, take it easy, take it easy. We'll, we'll put in the line, we'll put, we'll put it, take it easy, we'll put in the line, but we got to put in some more lines because we can't have Goku be a complete asshole. You know, he is the lead of the show and you kind of have a, you kind of have to have a, you know, an enjoyable lead. I mean, like, unless you're making a different kind of show. I mean, come on, guy. Take it easy, Toriyama, with your Toriyama-isms. But, um, he fucking reinforces that with, but I don't want to, s I don't like seeing innocent people and animals, basically living organisms, being harmed. I can't stand for that. So, in this episode, we got to see Seventeen and Goku team up twice to fight a poacher. Uh, Beerus had a bad dream. Seventeen joins the tournament. He wants the Super Dragon Balls. And, yeah, Goku got to give off his basic thoughts on being a hero. Which is basically, he's not a hero. He's just a guy. Which, on some level, I can respect as a Goku fan. But it was just kind of, like, really fucked up how... I already know this is going to be debated and talked about for, like, the same way where it's like, Hey, he's destroying all the universes! Oh, God, it's, it's going to be crazy, but whatever. It is what it is. The episode, as is, I enjoyed it. I can't say I liked it as much as the previous episode or even the Krillin episode, but I did enjoy this episode for what it was. It was a good popcorn flicky kind of episode. Animation artwork was good. Music was also really good. I enjoyed the music. Well, the episode was all right. It was okay. So I'm going to give it my final verdict would be a solid 7 out of 10. It's a 7 out of 10 episode. That's my final verdict for episode 87. So let me know what you personally think about that. But overall, the episode, it, it is what it is. It was okay. But with that being said, that is pretty much all my thoughts on the latest episode of Dragon Ball Super. We got a lot of Dragon Ball Super action packed epicness to be coming with the anime itself, not to mention merchandising, because as the great Mel Brooks said, the only the fucking, it's all about merchandising, merchandising, where the real money from the movie is made. We got the anime coming out on Blu-ray. Yes, it's going to be coming out a couple months from now. I actually recently finally finished binging the English dub of the first saga of Dragon Ball Super. I don't know if I'm going to do a review on the English dub as as I wanted to. I, I really want to wait till the Blu-ray comes out. But if I don't wait until the Blu-ray, expect a review for the Finnish English dub of the Battle of Gods saga, uh, possibly in the next couple weeks. Second to that, the manga is coming out less than two weeks from now on May 2nd, I think, which I can't wait to check out, pick up, so to speak, and then possibly do a review on that as well, or make a video on it at least. Let me know what you think. Subscribe to my channel if you've not done so already. I'd really appreciate that. Sorry if I was all over the place in this episode. It's just incredibly late, and I've had a really wacky time lately, so I just needed to do something, and which is make a video on this. But with that being said, this has been Josh12, and I hope you enjoyed.